What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're gonna look at the options menu for custom Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at the option menu for custom Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at the option menu. And if you take a look at this and said to yourself, hmm, that looks an awful lot like the combo box, you'd be correct. They are almost completely identical. That's why it's taken me a while to get to this one because it's basically the exact same thing as the combo box. As far as I can tell, a combo box allows you to click on this thing and type something. Here it says red. With a combo box, you can type in your own thing and hit the button. With an option menu, you cannot. That's really kind of the only difference I can tell. So we can click on this, it says green, or we could come down here and pick yellow and it changes it to yellow. Uh, you could use a button to actually pick the thing instead of just selecting. We're gonna look at all of that. And it has a bunch of different options to change the color and the style and all that good stuff. We'll look at all that in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this custom Kinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic custom Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm calling it ctk underscore option menu dot pi. And let's just come down here and set this up. Now, if you watch the combo box video and you're good on that, you can skip this video. It's really almost identical. There's a couple of different styling options. They're a little bit different. Uh, the combo box has a couple of things that the option box doesn't as far as styling goes, but otherwise they're exactly identical. It's just, they're named different. So let's come up here and let's start by uh, setting the different options we want. So let's create a list called colors. And inside of here, I'm just gonna put red, green and blue. And then let's just come down here and create our options menu. So I'm gonna call this my underscore option. And this is gonna be a custom Kinter dot CTK. And this is option menu. Now notice these two words, option and menu are both capitalized. Sometimes T Kinter capitalizes the second one, like in menu, sometimes it doesn't. In this case it does, uh, so that's good. So here we wanna put this in a root and we want our values to equal colors right here. And strictly speaking, that's kind of all we need to do actually. So let's go my underscore option dot pack, give this a pad Y of like 10, push down the screen a little bit. And let's come over here and run this just to make sure this looks okay. So I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run Python ctk underscore option menu dot pi. And when we do, we get this drop down box. It says red, green, and blue. If we click on one of these things, it doesn't do anything yet, but it looks good. So, okay, that's the option menu. So Let's now play around with this. And actually let's give this a pad Y of like 40 to really push it down a little bit more. And so now let's make this to where when we click on one of these things, it does something. So we can do that by giving it a command. So I'm gonna call it command and let's call this thing color underscore picker. So we don't have this function just yet. We're gonna come up here and create it. So let's create function. Now let's define color picker. And what I wanna do is come down here below our option menu and let's create a label. So let's go my underscore label. And this is gonna be a custom tkinter.ctk label. We wanna put it in root. We want the text to equal nothing for now, but let's go my underscore label dot pack. Give this a pad Y of, I don't know, 10 or so to push down the screen a little bit. So now when we select something from our option menu, we want to update this text with whatever this thing is, right? Let's copy this my label, head up to our function, and let's just go my label.configure. And we want to set the text equal to what? Well, let's create a variable here called choice. And here we could just set the text equal to choice. So this option menu, whenever you click on it, it will pass in an event. And we can account for this event right here and then just pass it here. Now, if we really want to be fun with this, we could say text underscore color and set that also to choice just for fun. Uh, but let's go ahead and save this and run it to see if that worked. So here we can pick green and boom, it says green there. We can hit it, pick red and now it says red. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Well, what if we don't want to click this thing? What if we wanna make a selection 
and then do something later on by like clicking a button, for instance. How do we do that? Well, pretty easy. Let's come down here and create a button. So I'm gonna call this uh, pick button, I don't know. And this is gonna be a custom tkinter.ctk button. We wanna put it in a root. We want the text to say what? Make choice, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> and here we'll give this a command of that same color underscore picker function. But let's create a different one. Let's call it color picker two. Because when we're using the option menu, it's passing an event, but the button itself doesn't pass an event. So we'll just create a different function to deal with this whole thing. So let's define color picker two. Again, we're not going to pass anything in. And here we could just my underscore label dot configure again, and set the text equal to now this time instead of choice, because we're not passing an event in, we have to just call my option right here. And then we can dot get whatever has been selected. And again, we could go text underscore color equals my option dot get. And that should work as well. So let's go ahead and save that head back over here, run it, see if that works. So now when we select a thing, for instance, green, it still goes to green. So we have to change that. So let's come up here uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, to our options. And instead of giving this a command, let's comment that out. So here, I will just put it like this. So okay, so now that won't get fired every time we click on the thing, right? So let's run this again. And now if we click on green and nothing happens, oh, we forgot to pack our button. Oh, man. Uh, so let's come down here and let's go pick underscore button dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y 10 push down screen a little bit. All right, third time's the charm. Let's run this guy again. All right. So there we've got our button. So let's pick green. And now we click this button and boom, now it says green. So that's how you can programmatically make a selection instead of just clicking on the menu and having it fire. You have to actually hit the button. Uh, what's one more thing we could do? We've got red, green, and blue. If we wanted to add something and select that using a button, we can do that as well. So let's come back over here and let's create a button called yellow underscore button. And this is going to be a custom tkinter.ctk button. We again want to put it in a root. I want the text to say uh, pick yellow. And let's give this a command of yellow or whatever. And let's go yellow underscore button dot pack, give this a pad Y 10 push down the screen a little bit. And then let's come up here to our function section. And let's create that function. Now we can dot set my option. So we can go my option dot set, and we can just pass in whatever we want. So let's say yellow. And then again, let's come up here. And let's just do the same exact thing here to get what has been set. And that should work. So let's go ahead and save this head back over here, run this guy. So we could say green, make choice, it's green. Now if we pick yellow, boom, this changes to yellow, it gets added. It's not actually shown there, but it's, it shows it, you know, right here in the selected area, because we dot set it, right. And then of course, the text turns to yellow and actually changes to color yellow. So very cool. And really, that's all there is to it. Now, just like the combo box, we have lots of different options to uh, stylize and colorize this thing. But before we do that, <laughs> let me come down here. And remember, option menu is what this is, we can also combo box this guy, let's just change it to combo box, we won't make any other changes. Now, if we come back over here, run this guy again. Hey, look at that. It's the same thing. It looks a little different, though, the color is different. So that's another option. But again, here, see, I can change this to John Elder. Right. And if I make a choice, it changes it to John Elder, we get an error because there is no color of John Elder. But that's the main difference between a combo box and an option box, I can type in something and then do stuff with it. Again, an option menu, you can't do that. So besides that, and the, the color, they act exactly the same. And of course, we could change these colors to make them look similar if we wanted to, but you know, whatever. So okay, let's come back here. Let's change this back to an option menu. And let's talk about the different color things we can we can play with here. So uh, let me put this in here just so that we have it. 
Now, like I said, we went through all of these things in the combo box video, so watch that video. I'm not gonna go through these in great detail in this video, because we've already done it in that last video, and you can just go rewatch that if you want. I'll run through them very quickly. We'll type them up, but we're not gonna run it every time, because that's gonna take 10 more minutes, and we've already gone over all these things. So, of course, we can change the height here. So let's say height 50, and we can change the width. So let's say width uh, 200. We can change the font. We could set that to anything we want. Let's go Helvetica and like size 18 to make it nice and big. Let's get some space here. What else can we do? We can change the foreground color. So if we want to change this to say white, we can do that. Now that's the background color. It's not the foreground color. It's the stuff behind the stuff. In fact, let's just run it real quick and see. That's a little different. Oops, I misspelled width. See, that's what happens when you speed through these things. With, oh, yep, sure enough, TH, there we go. Let's run this guy again. So again, it's a little bigger, the text is bigger, the background is white. Now this is the foreground color of the sort of entry box area. It's not an entry box, but kind of looks like an entry box, right? So, okay, that's that. We can change the drop down underscore font. So I'm just gonna come over here. Let's change it to the same Helvetica and 18. We can change the corner radius as we can with most of these things. So uh, we can set that to 50 if we wanna make it really rounded. Now the combo box has a border width and a border color that you can change. You cannot change those in the option menu for some reason. So we'll leave those off you can change the button underscore color. So let's set that to red. You can change the button underscore hover underscore color. So let's change this to green. And we'll run this at the end to see how all this looks, you know, as it looks horrible, because it, it always does. We can also change the drop down underscore hover underscore color. So I don't know, maybe we'll change this to green also. We can change the drop down underscore FG underscore color. So that's the color of the little box that drops down, right? So maybe we wanna change this to, I don't know, let's say blue, <laughs> right? We can change the drop down underscore text underscore color. So let's change that to orange. That's nice and ugly. We could change just the regular text underscore color. So let's set that equal to say silver, make it a little easier, or maybe harder because we changed it to white. Let's change this to black, maybe or red, really pop with red, right? <laughs> uh, we could set the hover to true or false, right? So by default, oops, we need a comma here. Things change color when you hover over them. You could set that to false if you don't want it to. I do, so I'll just keep it like that. Uh, let's see, with the combo box, you can change the justification of the text. You can't do that with the option menu, but you can change the anchor, which is just anchor, and it is W by default, so that's the west side. Uh, we could change it to say center. Now, this is gonna be north, south, east, west, or center. I think these are your, your main options for that. Okay, what else can we do? We can set the state all up, obviously, to normal or disabled. If you set it to disabled, you can change the text underscore color underscore disabled. Uh, so let's change that to black. I don't want to disable it, but if you did, that's how you would do it. You would change this to, you know, disabled, I guess. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> or normal. And finally, you can set the dynamic underscore resizing. And that's true, I think, by default. You could turn that off by setting that to false. So when you resize your thing, it won't resize. So let's go ahead and save this. Run this guy, see how horrible this looks. All right, so we've got red, it's kind of centered, kind of hard to tell. That is sort of centered. We've got red, green, blue here. Uh, let's see, we can resize this and, oh, it does sort of resize dynamically, even though we set that to false, so I'm not sure what's going on there. And uh, yeah, there you go. So <laughs> horribly ugly, uh, but those are the different things you could play around with, and that's all there is to it. So that's the option menu. If you ask me, should I use option menu or combo box? I mean, it really doesn't matter. If you don't want your user to be able to type anything in, use the option menu. If you don't care if they type things in, or if you want them to type things in, use the combo box. That's really the big difference. Other than that, it's really not much different.
like I said, there's a couple of these options that are different on the combo box, but not really. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome. Over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address. And I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.